Meantime, Molson Coors is delivering a strong earnings beat this morning and posting its best top line growth in more than a decade. Shares are bumpy after they warned of rising transportation and packaging costs. The company also discontinued production of its Coors Light seltzer in the U.S. to focus on Topo Chico and Vizzy brands. Joining me now is Gavin Hattersley. He is the CEO of the Molson Coors Brewing Company. Gavin, welcome. It's great to have you. And, and tell us what's going on with the uh, transportation costs. Well, thanks very much for having me, Kenny. Look, I mean, transportation costs have been tight for the whole of uh, the whole of this year, frankly. Um, you know, and uh, we 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 do hedge some some elements of that, so we do have some cost certainty as as, as regards uh, transportation costs. But just like everybody else in the industry and anybody else using um, over the over the road haulage, it's it, it has been tight. Yeah, so tight, you know, gets to the point where, you know, we've obviously seen things get extreme as fuel shortages in some airports and that kind of thing because there's a shortage of truck drivers and prices are way up. So is this an issue where you kind of mention it to the side and say, okay, we might have to, you know, make a little bit of changes? Or at what point does it become, you know, a much bigger problem that has to be resolved and rethinking how your product gets around the country and doesn't totally eat into profit margins? Well, we do that all the time, Kelly. We do look at the most efficient and effective way to get our to get our, our, our brands and our beers out to our distributors. So whether that's over the road or whether it's uh, by rail, uh, we do focus on the most cost effective, cost efficient, and, and quickest way, frankly, to to get it to to our distributors. And and you know, with with the tightness in the in the freight market, uh, that's certainly an, an area that we're that we're putting a lot of emphasis on. All right, let me ask you about hard seltzer, which had been this huge hit product for the past couple of years, but we saw uh, Boston Beer doing uh, pretty poorly in the last couple of weeks on missing some seltzer trends. You guys have discontinued Coors Light seltzer. What's going on there? Well, Kelly, this is no surprise to us. I mean, we've been saying for almost a year now that we didn't see that the that the hard seltzer uh, category would grow at the, at, at the meteoric rates that it was growing. And uh, so this is no surprise for us. Uh, from our perspective, uh, we, we launched a number of, of hard seltzers in the U.S. market, and we've got clear, two clear winners uh, in Vizzy and in Topo Chico hard seltzer. So, you know, in order to prioritize and focus and put all our, our investments and efforts behind our, our two clear winners, uh, that led us to the decision to, to um, in the U.S., um, stop uh, producing Coors Hard Seltzer. I would tell you that up in Canada, Coors Hard Seltzer is doing really, really well. It's <laughs> gaining double-digit share in, in some retail, big retail outlets in Canada. So it, it, it will continue in that market. Oh, that's fascinating. I'd love to know what accounts for the, the differences in taste between the two countries. But let me ask you about how much longer you think the seltzer trend will continue. Um, and this, we were, when we were speaking about this the other day, uh, people were asking, well, what's next? You know, if that category is cooling off, what comes on its heels? Do we know yet? Well, from our perspective, the seltzer category is is here to stay, and and we've also been saying for quite some time now, whether it's growing ten or twenty or forty percent, it's still the fastest growing segment in 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 our space, and it's good for the beer industry, and it's surely good for our overall portfolio. I mean, we in the second quarter we had our, our largest share of our of, of revenue in our both premium space, and and the seltzers certainly played a a, a big part of that. So. It's here to stay. From an innovation pipeline uh, point of view, we've got a really robust uh, pipeline of innovation uh, coming next year and in the, and in the years beyond. Probably too soon to tell you about that just yet, but uh, we've, we've got some exciting ideas. Interesting. Uh, well, again, I would love to know. But let me ask you about COVID. Um, obviously, we've seen some major companies, major tech companies, delaying their return to work or trying to figure out whether to require vaccinations and that kind of thing. What are you guys thinking? Well, from the day one, really, Kelly, our focus has been on the health and, and safety of our, of our employees. And we've also put particular emphasis on the medical experts and what the CDC guidance is. And so that's what's uh, leading our decision-making process. We certainly are encouraging vaccines and uh, that all of our employees uh, get the vaccine. But at this point in time, we haven't mandated it. Can you give me a little hint on what's in your product pipeline? <laughs> I can't do that, Kelly. <laughs> well, I appreciate you letting me ask a, a couple of times and for joining us today, Gavin, to talk about the quarter and the trends. It's always good to see you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.